it's not very specific about exactly how foreign affairs should be developed. In other words, the, the spectrum from isolation on one side and intervention on the other was a spectrum they knew about. But they didn't want to specify too clearly exactly how steps should be taken to implement foreign policy. Policy generally is a statement of intent. The, the rubber meets the road when you try to implement it. So they decided in the many series, in the series of compromises, which is a respectable word, by the way, uh, compromises between those who wanted to give all power to the legislature or all power to the president. And they split matters up. So that, for example, the president is a commander in chief. The declaration of war falls for the legislature. You have these splits, both domestic and foreign. But in terms of foreign policy, the division is so multiple that I, I like to use the phrase of late Professor Corwin, very late in fact, in a book that came out in 1940, when he said, and I better get it right, Professor Corwin wrote, all of which amounts is saying that the Constitution, considered only on its effective grants of power, is an in invitation to struggle for the privilege of directing American foreign policy. So that, that's in a sense where we start. You may differ with other aspects of Corwin's argument. Some did. And he wrote it rather, he wrote this massive book, I think rather bitterly, when he realized that Franklin Roosevelt was not going to appoint him to the Supreme Court. And it permeates the book. But nonetheless, I think on the, in the famous quotation, almost a cliche that I just read, you have the essence of the problem because the pulling and hauling of the legislature versus the executive branch has been a pattern, sometimes more obvious, sometimes more subtle, a pattern of U.S. policy since the ratification of the Constitution.